topics. Okay. Um, you ready? Okay, so we had a guy in here. In fact, this is really weird. And this is how God works. Because every time I talk about this guy, we get mail for him. And he's been dead. He's been dead for maybe six, seven years now. All right, and he, by the way, he died of natural causes. He was like in his late 70s, and his name was Walt. All right, but just today I go through the mail, and there's mail for Wally, right? And I had already planned on talking about Walt, all right? So, Wally is, this is when he was probably in his uh, late 60s, early 70s. But Wally's claim to fame is that he was here for 36 years. 36 years. Kyle, Kyle, how old are you? 31. So you want to be here till you're 67? Till you're, till you're Charles's age. Look at it. That Charles, you're 68, right? 68. 68. So you'd be Charles' age. You, do you want that distinction? You could be, you could be Wally. Right? 36 years, right? 36 years. But before I go talk about Wally, there's a funny story about Wally. Wally, as you can see, was a very thin and small man. He was probably 5'4, um, weighed 120 pounds. And this, this story was passed to me oh, through several guys that knew Wally when he was here for the 36 years. And that 36 years was like he would be here for about eight or nine years and then he would go out and try to make it on his own and then he'd come back. Well, so he'd come back and forth. Anyway, Wally was probably in his 40s and this is during the 70s, 1970s, and he's from New Jersey originally. So he calls up American Airlines and says, American, I, I like to go back and visit my family up in New Jersey. So the family says, or American Airlines says, well, it's like $400 for an airline ticket. Wow. How many guys with your gratuity could pay for an airline ticket? Zero, right? So Wally goes, that ain't going to work. So then he thought, well, I'll call Greyhound. So he calls Greyhound, and it was still like a couple hundred, got $240 or something like that, to go to New Jersey and back. Then Wally had an idea. <laughs> That, and that what's funny is, Wally is an alcoholic. But you know what? Alcoholics and drug addicts get these crazy ideas, right? We go, you know what? We're going to beat the system, right? So Wally, since he's little, says, you know what? I'm going to have the warehouse guys ship me via UPS. And I'll be in a box. And I'll have all of it. I'm not, I'm not making that. That's a true story. Right, so here's Wally, five foot four, a hundred some pounds, one hundred ten pounds, something like that, in a box. Right? And it's really inexpensive. The UPS guy, oh, that's kind of heavy. Oh yeah, yeah, it's you know some of you put So he gets all the way to Kansas City, which I guess back then was a big distribution center for UPS. And somebody's going, this isn't right. This isn't like equipment. And so they open the box. Here's Wally right now. <laughs> they shipped his butt back. They shipped that, I guess, through Greyhound, you guys, at the Kansas City UPS, uh, ponied up the money and, and sent Wally back to Dallas. <laughs> but that's what they ask alcoholics and drug addicts think, right? We try to beat the system, right? We did it, yeah, you know. So anyway, Wally. Here's the deal with Wally. Wally was a good time child, right? So he loved drinking and partying. So when he left Soul Harbor, who do you think he hanged around with? His old drinking buddies. And he, you know, he, Wally, I don't remember this back when he was here in 2009, he'd say, hey, you know what? I don't drink anymore. But it's the old saying, if you hang around the barbershop long enough, right? And you hang, he is hanging around his old drinking buddy. And what happens? After a week or a couple of weeks, uh, what, what's a war down course like, right? I know I got really drunk on that. I'm a wild turkey guy, right? And so he would get drunk. 
And then he would go into, he'd lose his job, the great eraser, blah, blah, blah. And a couple weeks later, since Wally was a great worker, he called Souls Harbor and say, hey, Souls Harbor, will you take me back? Right? But did he call his sponsors? No. Did he go to AA meetings? No. Did he surround himself with the winners, with people in recovery? No. But you know what? Wally's story is <coughs> over a thousand guys here. Because when guys leave it, leave here, it's like, oh, I don't have to attend night meetings anymore, right? I don't have to do that crap anymore. Well, that crap is saving your life. That crap is saving your life. So, in fact, Steve, uh, one of the NA sponsors, I think he sponsors a couple guys in this room. What does he say? He says, the first thing you do is you go to a AA or NA meeting as soon as you leave Souls Harbor. <clears throat> That's the first thing you do. Because then you become conditioned. In fact, what I say is go to the A or NA group. And A and NA to me is the same thing. All right? Go to AA or NA before you leave. And pick out a group that's close to you. Get to know those people. <coughs> And these are your new friends. Because you know what? They're struggling with just like you. And they want to help you. Right? And that's, that's the beauty of AA or NA. Is now you have guys. Now how many guys leave here? I say over a thousand left here thinking, I don't have no name, blah, blah, blah. And they're Wallace. Kyle, do you want to be a Wally? <laughs> Charles H. beat Wally's record. I won't be around. I'll probably be dead by this, okay? But you, you'll know this story if you do come back. All right? So that's the Wally story. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, um, I was here for a couple years, and I was tracking guys who completed the program and were staying sober and clean, right? And I'm going, wow, there's two guys that have stayed sober and clean. What the heck are they doing different than the other guys? <clears throat> the big difference was they're going to a sober living house or Oxford House is what we call it. Oxford House is just a certain brand of sober living house. But Oxford House has requirements. And these guys to this day are still sober and clean. Right? And so well everybody else was getting their own apartments. Some people had the HUD deal where you get I'm not knocking the federal government, but it's, they put you in an apartment by yourself, and then those four walls start talking to you, right? And you become lonely, and you isolate yourself, and you isolate yourself, and you're out of recovery. And instead of going to the meetings, you're sitting there watching reruns of Leave it to Beaver or whatever, right? And then it's like that idea, you know, I never had problems with pot. So, I'm just going to smoke a little pot. Or, you know, alcohol. I never had problems with a watered down course light. Right? I, I'm a Scotch guy or a wild turkey guy. Whatever. And you entertain those ideas. But if you're going to A and A and you entertain those ideas, what are they going to say? No! Nothing! And they would help you out. So, what we did was, uh, this is back. <coughs> Of the strategy. So, the guys that implement this exit plan strategy, it's about a 94, 95% success rate. Now, with the success rate, a lot of shelters and whatnot, success rate means getting a job. Look, you guys are great workers. Getting a job isn't your problem, right? Your problem is, hey, keep them with the job. If you can't, Right? Because you're, you're like the guy today that I talked about who was my operations manager who got drunk and the work said, you know what, that's enough. So anyway, the exit plan strategy is you stay here at Soul Slaughter. So you complete, first thing you do is complete the six month program here. All right? And we call it the exit plan strategy. It's also our aftercare program. So you complete that. Believe it or not, I would say about 30 to 40% of our guys complete the program. 
60 to 70 percent say, you know what, I got this. Even after three or four months, or two months. I, I got, it. you know what, again, I got 12, all right, we'll have 12 years and another month and a few days. I don't have this. Right? <clears throat> so you complete the six month program. This should be like a major to do for you guys. After that, <coughs> The staff guys will work with you. Okay, uh, we have guys that uh, haven't finished high school, right? So we had, uh, in fact, Jonathan, uh, Gary, Russell, uh, and a couple other guys getting their GEDs, all right? Or trade. I had a few guys go to trade school. Or, you know, this one guy, in fact, there's a guy down uh, that's living with David in the Silver Living House just down there, who was my dispatch manager five or six years ago, and he, he's a young guy, and he said, Brent, what do you think we go to college? I said, yeah, Andrew, you're smart. You're smart enough to go to college. He goes, well, I don't think so. I go, no, no, no. And you know what? That guy is in his third year straight A's. Straight A's. See, the problem with, with the drug or alcohol or the pills is we have these dreams, right? We want to be better people. We want to pursue going to college, trade school, whatever it may be. But as soon as we drink, drug, or pop those pills, guess what happens? Erase. All those dreams go out the window. And we think, well, when we're doing it, when we're in the midst of our addiction, we'll go, you know what? I'm going to control it this way. How many of you guys are able to control it? If you did, you wouldn't be here. Right? I can't control. Right? So trade school, college. So we'll assess where you are. Uh, or getting a job. Keith over there got a job like, two or three days after you graduated. Mm -hmm. I was like, darn, you're already graduated from the program. Okay, and then with the job, you know, Again, you may choose this path or you may choose this path. Then we charge you half a month rent, right? The first month and then after that, full. But see, this is when you can save your money <coughs> for, you know, if you have child support payments, if you have court costs, if you want your own vehicle, whatever it may be. That's what you're doing. You're saving your money here at Souls Heart, right? Uh, and then what we suggest after that is, and, and this could be, we used to not have a time limit, but now we have too many guys sticking around. So typically, this is one year. All right? Unless you're really going in. I mean, if you go GD or train school, we may extend it. But it's one year, typically, after you complete the six-month program. Then we suggest you go to Oxford House. Now I'm a big proponent for Oxford Houses because they have rules. I go, it's like go from living with 60 or 70 guys at Soul Sauber to <coughs> five or six guys, right? But the difference is that you'll have your own room, uh, you'll have a job, they'll require you to go to meetings two or three times a week. But what I say is this, and I, um, I, I've, I've said this story before, but there, this guy in North Carolina, I, when I first got sober after a year or so, I was sponsoring people. And so at that time, um, I had retired from IBM, and I still had to start working here. So I had like um, four, five, six months where I wasn't, I didn't have a job really. And so I used to go to meetings with my sponsors. And there, you know what, 90 and 90 is, right? So 90 meetings and 90 days, whether you're in AA, and a double one that. And so I was going to meetings with them. I would see this guy all the time, right? Just a heavy set guy, uh, had a New York accident, rarely shared, and I thought he was a new guy. I thought he was brand new, because I saw him every time in North Carolina in the, in the meetings. And in North Carolina, we'd have, like, you know, an NAF Town East or AAF Freedom or Belmont, right? These groups. We have we met at church. So anyway, I see this guy, this guy different times. So finally I went up to him and started talking to him. And I said, How much time do you have? Because I thought he was a like newbie. The guy said he had 21 years. I said, wait a minute. 
is, is Tommy from Long Island. I'll never forget. You have 21 years, and you go, and he goes, yes, Brent. I'm doing 90 days in, in 90 meetings in 90. I go, wait a minute, you got 21 years. 21 years. How many of you guys have 21 years? If we had all you guys together, well, you won't have 21 years. Right? I said, Tommy, why are you doing this? And he said, why? Well, and this is back in 2009 when the economy was really bad. So I moved from New York down to North Carolina. Uh, I had health problems because of the cold. Uh, and I brought my wife down. And my wife didn't like in North Carolina, moved back to New York. I knew I could go back to New York because I had a job up there. So he basically lost his wife. Uh, he was fighting health problems. Uh, he was a plumber by trade, so he had, you know, he was in his late 40s, so he had knee problems. You know how plumbers always kneel down and stuff, so he had knee problems. And, and then, you know, he's struggling finding jobs there in North Carolina. He said it was better than, than New York. So he, he said he like, had three strikes against him. But he had a sponsor in North Carolina. You know what the sponsor said? You need to step your program up. You're going to rework the stats and you're going to do 90 and 90, even though he has 21 years. Because you know what? This disease is forever. This isn't a sprint, guys. This is a marathon. All right? Because if you have an attitude of all I got to worry about is today, those days turn into weeks. Weeks into months, months into years and years into decades. And that's what happens in Sprite. And that's what happened to Tommy. But there's certain times in your life you're going to feel like, and I, that happened to me. It happened when I moved here. Because I didn't know anybody. I knew a few people because I had worked here like 20 years before. But it wasn't like I knew the people in AA. Because at that time when I was living here in Dallas and Coppell, I was in my addiction. So all I knew was all my drinking things, right? And some of them were alcoholics, some were heavy drinkers. I had, so I did, when I came here, I did 90 and 90. In fact, I attended every meeting here, but I did a lot of outside meetings. And they saw me all the time at free. So that's what you need to do. So when you leave and anything changes in your life, you got to say to yourself, I got to step it up. I got to step it up. I got to go more meetings. But to me, it's 90 and 90. And that's what we suggest, is when you move into Oxford House, do 90 meetings. And then after <coughs> six to nine months at the Oxford House and you've accumulated your money, then you move out. Then you move to independent. Because, see, this is the beauty of, of Soul Sorry. If you do this program, you're going to a very structured, right? I mean, your life is structured. Whether you believe it or not, you have a very structured life here. Mm -hmm. Right? During the day you're working, at night, you have the evening recovery, we take roll call and all that kind of stuff. And then what happens after you leave the Oxford House is total independence. See, and I did, to me, and rarely do you hear this, one of the biggest factors in being clean and sober is time. Because the longer you're sober and clean, the more able you're to deal with the stresses in life, right? Because if you only have a month, a couple weeks, two months, three months, you really haven't had life experiences. During sobriety, I had a girlfriend that I was with for eight, almost nine years, broke up with me. In fact, we're engaged, all right? I've had my dad pass away, who I was very close with. I had my mom pass away. I didn't realize. I didn't realize. But what happened during those time periods? I stepped my game up. Right? It's, it's like an athlete preparing for the NBA Finals, right? He's going he's to practice more, he's going to take more shots, he's going to, because this is the show. And the same with your survival. you got to step up your game when bad crap happens. And you can't just say, oh, poor me. You know, I always say there's two reasons why you relapse, right? What are they? Pussy or dumbass? <laughs> Pussy means life is hard on me. 
And my girlfriend, that's a good one. My wife left me, my girlfriend left me. Well, you know what, she should have left you. Okay, yeah, that's a pussy. But most guys are dumbass. Where you've been here for six months, nine months, a year, whatever, and then you quit doing the program and you have that thought. Well, you know what? I'll control this side. Or it'll be different. Yeah, it's different. It's going to be worse. Right? And that's the dumbass. I see more dumbasses than I do pussies. Right? So, that's, that's the exit plan strategy for you guys. Um, we have it written out, um, Reggie and whatnot, but it works. Again, if you, if you do this program, you complete the program, you, you work on this stuff right here, and then go to a sober living house, uh, Evan Thomas, right? He's doing that right now. He's, uh, he's going through CR. Right? I think he's going to be picking up 18 months uh, in May. So this stuff works. It works. Because the longer you're sober and clean, the more you get used to of, of dealing with life or life service. Otherwise, I, you know, for 30, I was a drug addict and alcoholic for 32 years. And how did I deal with drugs? How did I deal even in the happy moments? I got high run. Right? And now you're used to it. And there will become a time, I've said this before, there'll be a time after two years, three years, five years, where you go from, first of all, when you guys are here, you can't imagine yourself not drinking and drugging the rest of your life. That was that was like, man, I can't believe it. I, I don't know if I can handle it, right? And after two, three years being clean, going through this aftercare program exit plan strategy, the thought of ever using or drinking again is like foreign to you. You can't imagine yourself getting screwed up again. And see, that's the beauty of time. The beauty of time is that you get to deal with stuff. And then you get to, to, to see the benefits of being sober and clean. Anyway, that ends my town hall. I. Uh, Finished uh, 10 minutes early. You guys have a uh, wonderful evening.